people do fall into that trap. They they fall into the trap of thinking that they need to wait for the perfect moment before acting to, to become an entrepreneur and start a business. It's almost like they don't feel they have the right to yet or they want the circumstances to be even more perfect than they are currently. Did it feel like there was a right time that presented itself for you to make a start with your business? I don't think there is really a right time. The best time to start a business and, and to take action towards starting a business is now because there is no perfect time to start a business. So waiting for that perfect moment is in itself a form of procrastination and oftentimes one that we don't realize that we're we're using as an excuse not to just move ahead, take a step in the right direction. I think it's that underlying fear or avoidance of that initial discomfort and uncertainty. You're, you know, you're looking out into the abyss, you're thinking, I've not experienced that world out outside of you know, Earth's atmosphere, I need to know the path. But oftentimes you won't know the path until you begin. So you just have to to leave it at some point. You have to leave that comfort zone. And it's, yeah, I don't think there is a, a right time. I mean, I, I yesterday I took my son, who's two years old, to a swimming lesson. And he told me he didn't want to get in the pool at first because it was too cold, right? So I kind of jumped in and I was like, look, I promise you, as soon as you jump in, it'll be absolutely fine. But he was hesitant and you could see that you could see what was going through his mind, like the emotions on his face. On one hand, he saw me in the water. He wanted to experience the joy, the freedom of swimming and playing in the water. So that was the outcome he wanted, right? But he didn't want to go through that initial discomfort of gradually getting into slightly chilly water and that pain of going through that discomfort, that that leaving your comfort zone, you know? So eventually the thing to do is just jump in because within seconds you're fine and and people often don't want to go through that pain and have that delayed gratification so they maybe just say ah oh, you know i'll go swimming next week or they never even go to the pool they never even get in right but sometimes you just have to step out of your comfort zone and jump in the water's not going to get any warmer the longer you leave it you know it's just once you're in and you start moving you'll soon warm up and it's exactly the same in business once you're in business and you start and the wheels are in motion you can change direction. That's the thing that people forget. You can't, you can ask for support when you inevitably get stuck, which you will. You learn from your mistakes. But if you just sit on the sidelines and watch and do nothing and just say, oh, I read a few books about this and I, I know the plan, but you've not enacted any steps of the plan, then you're not going to get anywhere. It's like, as they say, you can't steer a parked car, right? If it's still, it doesn't matter how much you turn the steering wheel, it's not moving anywhere because you haven't got momentum. So you need to begin that journey. I think that point illustrates uh, getting started perfectly about jumping into to the water. And actually, it shows amazingly with, you know, with the two-year-old son as well, how naturally it's born into us, that fear of leaving our comfort zone and going into discomfort. And it's just the way that our brains are wired naturally from the thousands of years of, of evolution, that we're naturally going to try and avoid discomfort and avoid leaving a comfort zone and safety. And instead, our brain wants us to take the easy path, the comfortable route that we've already always gone down. And that's a brilliant illustration. That's We've got to then fight that, that inner mind, the, the thoughts that it gives us to realize that it's just always going to try and keep us safe. But actually to go after our goals and to achieve the uh, the outcomes that we want to achieve, we have to go against what our mind's telling us because our mind will be able to come up with any excuse under the sun why now isn't the right time. So if we listen to that, then we'll never start. Instead, uh, we need to realize that it's just trying to keep us safe and comfortable um, and we need to push past that in order to go after our goals. Great story there. So I guess on that point that we think there may never be a perfect time for people to start, does that mean that people therefore should never start? No, it just means that you, you've you got to stop waiting for that supposedly perfect time because if you have expectations of that time where the stars all align arriving, it will never come. It will never happen. So I think the best time to start is when you have a strong enough reason to start and a plan for the vehicle that's going to get you to the destination. So the way I like to think of this is you can either have a really strong push or a strong pull towards the goal that you want to get to. And ideally, you have both. So an example of a push would be something like, I hate my current circumstances. You know, I hate my commute or the boss that I report to or the hours that I work or my shift patterns, you know, the, the life circumstances that I'm currently experiencing. They say that as soon as the discomfort of going through that change is less than the current discomfort that you're experiencing in your situation, then it it's rational to change at that point, right? Because that it's the lesser of the two long-term discomforts. And so that could be one thing where you think I need to change that circumstance. So that's a push. An example of a pull or a desire towards getting to something could be that 
you've got your eyes set on a goal. Like I want to move to Bali. I want to live in a villa with a pool and go out and surf every day and run my business from a laptop and have that freedom and control to go out for lunch and dinners and meet friends and you know that that kind of thing could be your reason why and putting that on a vision board seeing it every day will will give you that deep desire that why that will help you during those moments of fear where you feel like you're looking out over a edge of a cliff and thinking I don't know what's going to happen here but it will remind you why you've got to keep jumping out of your comfort zone so either of those is fine and ideally a combination of the two would be good but the most important thing is not just having them but it's getting clear on them writing them down putting some kind of a vision board with photos together and then just referring back to that each and every morning and evening so that you know what your main drivers are to becoming an entrepreneur and launching your own online business because those are the things that will carry you through to seeing success with it and having those goals in your mind from the very start it's going to give you that push and that pull both together to realize what you'd be missing out on if you didn't make a start I think another thing that people often wait for is they wait until they have enough resources, enough money, enough cash to be able to go into a new venture. And I think this is a double-edged sword. It's a fine balance because, yeah, you want enough. Enough is good because enough gives you a buffer. It means you're getting the boat as close to the dock as possible before you make that jump. You have a safety net there. But sometimes you can have too much. You know, if you wait until the point where you have these huge piles of cash and you've taken this massive payout or inheritance or whatever it is, one of these big life events that causes a huge influx of, of cash, sometimes the hunger goes. I've seen that from from members who've, who've considered joining us and then, you know, they've come into a couple of hundred thousand pounds of, of cash and they're like, I'm in no rush. I want to, you know, think about things. I might go and invest in a, a bricks and mortar business. And it's a difficult one because it's like, well, you don't want to lose the hunger to and the drive to create the business. I think that's almost our secret weapon as entrepreneurs. It's that drive, that motivation to get up and running because that's the thing that will get you through the first year or so. It's that drive to succeed and, and like lighting the fire, knowing I've got to do this to feed my family. Now, as I say, it's a, a, a fine balance and I wouldn't want to put you in a position where you feel like everything is dependent on this. So that's why we say it is good to have a buffer of certainly a few thousand pounds to, to start any business. But when you have a strong enough drive and you have the resources available, but not waiting until you have a you know, huge abundance of resources, that would for me is as perfect a moment as any to start a business. Yeah, and I can relate to that. I, I know that I didn't feel completely ready when I made a start and started my e-commerce business because I didn't have a, a huge pool of resources that I could fall back on. But actually that became a real motivation for me in the first 12 months was that I knew that I had to make it work and I put it into my mind that I had to make it work no matter what. And that was our, became my biggest drive. And one of the reasons I think that I've succeeded and been able to grow a business was that I looked at it and realized that there is no other option other than this working. So that can actually become one of your greatest assets. If you do need it to work, then that can really push you to, to keep going if things get tough and, and make sure you make a success of it. Yeah, exactly. And people do fall into that trap. They they fall into the trap of thinking that they need to wait for the perfect moment before acting to, to become an entrepreneur and start a business. It's almost like they don't feel they have the right to yet or they want the circumstances to be even more perfect than they are currently. And so imagine, I'll say this to members of ours, that imagine if you're on a surfboard, right, and you're paddling out at sea to catch this this wave because you want to start surfing it back into land. You paddle out and you see a wave that comes past and you think, oh no, that one's a, a little bit small. I'm going to wait for a better one. And then you see another wave that comes past later and it's like, oh no, that, that one's a bit too big. I want to make sure that I don't fall off. You know, I'm, I'm apprehensive about this. I'm just going to keep paddling and waiting. Before you know it, you've been out there like an hour and then two hours and you just keep making excuses for why the wave that's coming isn't perfect. You know, there's always a better one coming. Oh no, that one was, wasn't perfect or I wasn't quite positioned well enough for that. And you miss all these countless learning opportunities that you could have caught the wave, fallen off, learned why you fell off, and then just jump back on the next one. And so I, I'd say it's better to just start out, start riding the waves as they come, even if they're not exactly what you expect, so that you don't end up in a position where at the end of the day, you realize, oh, well, the sun's setting now, it's dark, I didn't catch a wave all day, and I, I've got to go back to shore now, and, and I didn't learn anything. Now, that's the thing with business. It's like you won't learn until you start trying to ride some of those waves. Exactly. I think people come into starting a business thinking about, you know, they've got two options. Either they get perfect now and start later and do all the preparation that they can beforehand so they feel ready when they start. Or the other option is that you start now and get perfect later. 
Um, and that's the title of a great book, by the way. And I think people need to realize that the, the first option isn't actually an option because you can't get perfect before you start because there's so much that you just can't possibly learn until you've started in a business. And you couldn't ever forecast the things that you're going to learn until you're actually on the job and, and doing it day in, day out and learning. So that procrastination or waiting for the perfect wave, as you put it, is so easy to do because you think, oh, if I just wait for the perfect time where I learn a bit more about running a business or about accounting or learn a bit more about ads, then that will be the perfect opportunity for me. But actually, all those things you can learn once you've started and you'll learn it so much quicker when you started as, as well. So really the important point is to get, is to start now and think about getting perfect later, which I think is a, is a big point. 